is Miss Becky. Welcome back to our art adventures. And this week we're going to be learning about an artist named Louise Bourgeois. And then we're going to be doing a fun weaving project because Miss Bourgeois was a textile artist. Textile is another word for cloth or fabric. And when Louise grew up, all the cloths and fabrics and clothing that people wore had to be handmade or hand woven together. Now we have machines that do that, but back then it was a lot of work to, um, to weave clothing and to put things together. So we're gonna learn a little bit more about Louise who grew up about 100 years ago, and then I'm gonna show you how to do a fun weaving project. Cloth Lullaby, The Woven Life of Louise Bourgeois. Words by Amy Noveski, Pictures by Isabel Arsenault. Read with permission by Abrams Books for Young Readers, New York. Louise was raised by a river. Her family lived in a big house on the water that wove like wool thread through everything. The river's soil nurtured a garden where Louise and her family grew geraniums, peonies, asparagus and cherry trees, apples and pears, purple tamarisk, pink hawthorn, and sweet smelling honeysuckle. Along its banks, her father planted poplars. Louise kept diaries of her days and in a cloth tent pitched in the garden, she and her siblings would stay until the dark surprised them, the light from the house and the sound from the Verdi opera far away through the trees. Sometimes they'd spend the night and Louise would study the web of stars, imagine her place in the universe and weep and then fall asleep to the rhythmic rock and murmur of the river water. The river provided flowers and fruit, a lullaby, and a livelihood. Louise's families restored tapestries, art woven from wool, and the wool loved the tannin-rich waters which cleansed and strengthened it and allowed it to soak up the color. At the family's workshop, Louise's mother, like her mother before her, repaired fabric grown threadbare with time. She loved to work in the warm sun her needle rising and falling beside the lilting river, perfect delicate spider webs glinting with ca caught drops of water above her. And when Louise was 12 years old, she learned the trade too, drawing in the missing fragments of a tapestry. It was often the bottoms of these fabric pictures that got the most wear and were most in need of repair. And so Louise became adept at drawing feet. Drawing was like a thread in a spider's web. Among tapestries neatly stacked like books in a library, Louise's mother taught her daughter about form and color and the various styles of textiles. Some bore elaborate patterns, others told stories. She taught her about the warp and the weft and how to weave the tools of their trade, spiral shaped spindles, spools of wool, and a needle. She taught her how to dye purplish red, which was made from the crushed cocknail bugs, indigo and gold, or yellow from plants, black wool that came straight from the backs of black sheep. And that wool smelled, and that's how you knew it was real. Louise's mother was her best friend, deliberate, patient, soothing, subtle, indispensable, and as useful as an aragne, which is a French word for spider. Louise's father was not a restorer, but he appreciated fine things. He bought Louise beautiful clothes from Parisian department stores, but he was always leaving, which made Louise so mad that she threw herself into the river See Louise floating in the river? 
He brought back cloth scraps from his travels and Louise's mother fixed them. Two halves of a cloth would find their way back together again. Rentriage, to reweave across the cut, to make whole. Louise followed the river to Paris, where it flowed into the Seine. Little did she know that one day soon her beloved river would be gone, filled in, flowing no longer with the waters that the wool loved, but with cars on their way to the city, a memory. At the university, she studied mathematics. She liked subjects with stability and order, like geometry and cosmography. Stars were predictable, so too the sunrise, the setting of the moon. But she was deeply disappointed to learn that math, like life, is sometimes uncertain. While she was still a student, her mother died. Louise was heartbroken. She felt abandoned and all alone, a thread broken. She abandoned math and the stars and turned to painting, applying the lessons that she learned so far to art. The color blue pinches my heart. She drew and she painted and she wove. She missed her mother so much that she sculpted giant spiders made of bronze, steel, and marble. She named them Mama, which meant mother. Her mother was not unlike a spider, a repairer of broken things. If you bash into the web of a spider, she doesn't get mad. She weaves and she repairs it. Louise gathered all the fabric of her life, all the dresses and the garments that her father bought her, all the bed linens, towels, tablecloths, and her new husband's handkerchiefs, and she cut it all up, and then she spent the rest of her life putting it back together again. She was making new things out of old things. She sewed and she stitched, she reworked and wove. She stuffed stockings to create cloth sculptures and figures, mother and daughter. She sewed colorful spirals and circular webs. And she sewed smaller, sweeter spiders, ones woven of soft colored ribbons, others of cloth or delicate metal. She made cloth drawings and cloth books the blank pages, napkins from her wedding trousseau. She made books about the hours of the day and the dawn and the rising sun and the stars that she once loved. And because she did not want to forget a thing, she made a book about forgetting. Weaving was her way to make things whole. With the remaining fabric of her life, Louise wove together a cloth lullaby she wove the river that raised her, eternal pinks, blues, and watery hues. She wove a mother sewing in the sun, a girl falling asleep beneath the stars, and everything she ever loved. And when she was done, all of her spiders beside her, she held the river and let it rock her again. Here she is with one of the spiders that she made. <laughs> so she didn't really think of spiders as scary. She just thought of them as hardworking and industrious and um, repairers of things. Here's another one that she made with cloth and metal. Here's some more um, textile art that she made. I thought they kind of looked like spider webs, some of them, or even um, a little bit remind me of the Kandinsky circles that we made. But she would weave together colors and yarn and pieces of fabric. She also really liked spirals. She said later that um, it would remind her of wringing out fabrics by the river when she was little. And spirals were um, a way of kind of creating order out of the chaos, she thought.
And here are some uh, fabric pieces that she pieced together uh, toward the end of her life. She um, actually kept working all the way up to um, the time that she died in 2010, which is not that long ago. And um, she was 98 years old and she kept um, taking things apart and making them in new pieces of art until she was 98 years old. It's pretty awesome. So today we're gonna do a circle weaving and I've got here a um, paper plate that I'm gonna use. You could also use a piece of cardboard um, that have been recycled, um, that has been cut out into a circle shape. And uh, what I did is I just kind of created some slits um, in the plate that we're gonna use to create um, the base for our weaving. Um, what I did is I um, did a mark um, on one side and then I created a mark on the other side. And, um, and then I created a mark halfway in between those two and then um, halfway between those two and then I created eight sections on this side. Um, but on the other side, I made the pieces a little bit bigger so there are seven pieces on the other side. So the, the thing you want to end up with is um, you have about an odd number of shapes. So I'll have uh, 15 shapes here. Um, you could also make it 13 or 11 or whatever you want. You just need to make sure it's about, it's an odd number of roughly equal same size shapes. So you're also gonna need some different colored yarn and maybe even some fabric scraps or other items that you can weave into your circle weaving. So I'm gonna start with this blue yarn and I'm just gonna put it in um, one of the little cuts that I made in the edge of the plate and just kind of go across um, and put it in the other side and then just bring it around going across like this and uh, keep doing that until I've got the base from my circle weaving. And then because it's the odd number, you just kind of have like one left um, and so what I'm going to do with that is I'm just going to um, take the end of my yarn and I'm just going to um, just go through up there and then I'm um, just kind of wrap it around this way Just connecting the center a little bit. And then when I've got it um, so they're kind of joined together a little bit in the center, then you can just start weaving. What I like to do is um, I like to kind of follow up the edge of my yarn. Um, you could also wrap it around a safety pin or a, a bobby pin and just kind of wrap it into a, like a little ball and then I just kind of go under and over, under and over every other one. And because it's an odd number it will automatically just start moving around and you don't have to pull it too tight just enough to, um, to create a little circle, or actually we're kind of creating spirals like these bourgeois like. This um, actually can be really therapeutic, it's sort of relaxing. I can see why um, this artist liked to do this. It can be really um, almost uh, healing in a way. And it kind of reminds me of a little spider kind of weaving in and out. 
Ooh, it looks like a spider web a little bit. Okay, so here's my um, finished circle weaving, um, at least finished for now. And uh, what I did is after I added um, the greenish red, I added um, actually a strip of fabric from a, um, an old piece of fabric, um, leftover piece of fabric that I had. Then I used some silver and some more, kind of a reddish purple color. And then um, getting out to the edge, I, um, I went ahead and uh, I turned it over and then just cut the loose, um, cut the blue pieces that were holding it together. And then I just tied pairs of strings together um, on the edge. And then I took the, um, just for fun, after I tied those together, I tied the leftover <laughs> strings from those ties and tied those together a little bit further out. So I just thought it made kind of a cool design. And of course I have an odd number, so I get this one piece left over that I could use to hang it up if I wanted. So um, the other thing you could do is um, you could hang um, just long pieces from it if you like, or um, pieces of fabric from it and make it a wall hanging. Um, you could even leave it on the plate or the circle and just decorate it if you like it like that. So there's lots of things you can do with your circle weaving. Um, I'm sure you'll think of some creative solutions. Well, I hope you had fun with that. We're going to be um, meeting at the park again tomorrow at one o'clock. If you would like to join us to do some circle weaving and some other textile art, um, please give us a call at the children's room. And um, if you can't make it and would just like to create some textile art at home or some weaving, um, please send us pictures of your artwork to um, the Ashboro Children's Room at gmail.com. And we would love to put your work up in our gallery. I hope you'll join me again in another two weeks for our next art adventure. Bye.